church. Amen. Amen. Right? So last week we spoke about making disciples. This Sunday we'll speak about making overcomers. Say with me, overcomers. overcomers. You know, so with that said, let's go to Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And this is what the Bible says there. It says, and they say, and I, I overcame him. Because of the blood of the Lamb. And because of the word of their testimony. And they did not love their life. Even when they faced death. With that said, will you lift your hands to heaven? And man, the Lord is in this place. He's, he's going to do something very special this morning. I ask the Lord that he'll prepare all of our hearts to receive what he wants to do here today. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, and I thank you for your people. Lord God, we, we live in the valley. It's hot here, but today it's cold, but your people have come. Father God, Lord Jesus, they, they, they're pressing, Lord God. They're pushing because, Father God, we know that you have the answer in your hands, that you have our lives in your hands. And this morning, this morning we honor you. And Lord Jesus, we come together in one accord before your throne. And speak to us, Lord God. Father God, deliver your word to our hearts, Father God. And let it create a mighty harvest of righteousness in our heart this morning. Father God, to the overcomer here today, I say, well done. Keep moving forward. Don't stop. In the name of Jesus, Father God, I thank you this morning. Amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand this morning. Yeah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Touch your neighbor, touch your neighbor to the right and to the left and say, overcomer. Tell him, overcomer. In the name of Jesus. You may be seated in God's house this morning. Hallelujah. People of God, I don't, I don't know how to say the next sentence. Uh, I'll try my best to, to speak what the Lord has put in my heart. Uh, even at my best, I don't think I can give it justice. So I ask you to continue to press through through this message and learn as much as you can. But I want to tell you with everything in my being, this next sentence, how much God loves the overcomer. Man, that Lord loves how he loves the person, man, who overcomes. You want to please the Lord. This is it right here. How the Lord loves the overcomer. You know, life can be hard, people of God. Uh, life has issues. There's pain in life. Things happen that... that that can bring you to your knees. But when the Lord sees that person, who no matter what, highs and lows, mountain tops and valleys, when the Lord sees that person that just doesn't have a quit in his, in his heart, through good, through bad, through ugly, nothing deviates him. You know, he... He challenges temptation. He presses forward. Nothing pulls him away. If anything, during conflict and battles and warfare, somehow it pushes him even closer to the Lord. How the Lord loves the overcomer. How the Lord loves that person that says, not my will, Lord, but your will be done. Not my, not my feelings, Lord, but your will be done. Not my thoughts, Lord, but your will be done. Not my strength, oh God, but your strength be done. How the Lord loves the overcomer. How the Lord loves that person that just don't quit. That person that trusts in him. That person that... that Delights himself in him, the person that keeps pushing towards him, the person that not it's not how you start in the gospel. 
Man, it's not how you, it's good to start good, it's good, but man, it is so good to finish strong. It is so, it is so good to understand that the walk of God is, is not a, a hundred yard sprint where you lift your hand because you want a battle, but it's a long race where you are in pace with the Holy Spirit. How the Lord loves the overcomer. How the Lord loves the person that stands out in the midst of a crooked generation. How the Lord loves the person that does not go in the path of the ungodly, but he decides to go contrary, that he's on the, he's on the different waves against the grain. How the Lord loves the overcomer. You know what? This church is filled with overcomers. I, I don't want to, I don't, I want to tell you how as a pastor, how delightful it has been to see many of you have been challenged greatly and see you stand strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The Lord loves the overcomer. And I want to encourage you this morning to continue, continue, and don't stop. This race is still the end. No matter what, the most important thing is to keep, keep on keeping on. Do not grow weary in doing good for the Lord. Can I hear an amen? amen. Yeah, hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Amen. We read here that, that in, in Revelation 12, we read that, that we overcame him. Who, who did we overcome in our daily combat? We overcome the world. We overcome this very flesh that, man, that can deviate you, that can push you away from the things of God. We overcome the devil and his hosts. We overcome temptation. We overcome quitting. We overcome stopping. We overcome Anything that this life can throw at us that wants to deviate us from the love of our God. We know that the love of our God is what keeps us strong in him. We know that it's because of him that we can, that we can stand, stand strong. We know, we know that it's him. We know that it's not our own strength. We know that it's not our own wisdom. We know that it's not by might. We know that it's not by power. It's only because of him. But he has given us this great victory. And you know what? The Lord wants to show forth his victory in our lives. The Lord wants to see the victory of Jesus manifested in you and me. Amen. Our testimony, that's why he says that we defeat him by the blood of the Lamb and by the testimony. It's the testimony, it's the person that says, I will do God's will above my will, and I will show it forth that in this world, maybe, maybe a person can say, man, I will serve God because of the testimony in that person. Hallelujah. The Lord wants to, to see his victory show forth in our lives. The victory at the cross that he won completely. There were 100% victory over every enemy. Like Pastor Eliab said this morning, you know, we're in the winning team, but we were in the winning team because of our Lord Jesus Christ who won that victory solid, solid. It was a million to zero and it's still going because we're still showing for his victory. We're still scoring winning points. But it's not because of you. It's all because of him. Jesus is a conquering king. He conquered at the cross. He didn't lose anything. If anything, he says, Lord, I want everything that you put in my hand. 
Everything that he won at the cross is a complete victory. Our God is a conquering God. So now he wants to manifest his victory through us. He wants to manifest the victory of the cross should manifest through us. It should manifest through you. So it doesn't matter what you're going through. It really doesn't. It doesn't matter what I'm going through. What matters is, do you believe in the finished work of the cross? And do you believe in the conquering king? And do you believe that he wanted at the cross for you and me? And that's what matters the most. What matters the most is, do you believe? Do you believe in his finished work? Because it makes a difference. It makes a difference what you believe. If you believe that he won the battle, then you, then that same battle will manifest in your body. It will manifest in your mind. It will manifest in your words. The word overcomer comes from the Greek. Let me see if I can pronounce it right. It, it says nikau. Not nika like Nicaragua. No, nika. Yeah, nika. There we go, nika. That's what, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> nikau, which we get the word Nike from. We get the word Nike, you know, that just do it. But, I, but you know, there was a commercial back in the, in, the, in the 80s, right, when Nike became to get real popular. Right? And it was the, the, the Michael Jordan, the Michael Jordan commercial. Does anybody old enough to remember the Michael Jordan commercial? Lift your hands if you remember the Michael Jordan commercial. You guys are the old ones. <laughs> what do you call it? But there was that, you know, it's got to be the shoes, Mike. No, it's not. And you know, I want to tell you, it ain't the shoes. You know, we conquer. We conquer because of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit that dwells in you, that comes from the Father, the power of the Holy Spirit that is in you. That's why we conquer. Can I hear an amen? amen. Yeah. The Holy Spirit that lives in you and me, because of him, you are a conqueror too. Right. Hallelujah. And the, and the Holy Spirit has come to teach you and show you and show you the victory of Calvary, that he, that he might help you manifest the same victory of the Calvary can manifest through your own life. The word power, he says, I will give you power, the Lord says, when the Holy Spirit comes. I will give you power. The word power comes from dunamis, which we get the word dynamite. I will give you power, dynamite power. To overcome, that you may be able to overcome the world, that you can overcome the flesh, that you can overcome the devil, that you can overcome its host, that you can overcome the lies of Satan. He is the accuser of the brethren. Every time you hear an accusation on your own very life as a man, as a woman of God, remember that the accuser of the brethren is right there in the mix. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Hallelujah. This is why you cannot accept the lies of Satan because the devil is a liar. From he was born, that is his language. Satan cannot tell the truth. And even when he tries to tell the truth, it's mixed with lies. And all it is to deviate you, to accuse you, to see if he can get you into a place of condemnation and guilt where you can torment yourself. Hallelujah. But that ain't the gospel. The gospel is a gospel of power. Say with me, power. power. There's power in you. Amen. The power is not you. The power is the Holy Ghost in you. Amen. This is why the overcomer understands that his power does not come from him. It comes from the Lord. This is why the Lord, when Paul was asking, Lord, Lord, man, deliver me from this. He says, no, in your weakness, you will have power. Because when you realize as a man and as a woman of God that your power is not you, that you are weak in the sight of the Lord, then the power of God can manifest. Because it's not by might, it ain't by power. It's by the power of the Holy Ghost. It's not by your own power, but the power of the Holy Spirit. Can I hear an amen? amen. Hallelujah. And if there's any shoes we want, we want the shoes girded for the gospel of peace. Hallelujah. The first overcomer, the example setter, 
The one that says, I'll, I'll go before you, son. I'll go before you, daughter. That first overcomer is our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what he says in John 16, 33. He says, these things I have spoken to you. Let me say that again. This is the Lord speaking. and says, these things have I spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulations, but be of good cheer. I have overcome this very world. Amen. People of oh God, it's a lie of the pit of hell if you think that you will not go from tribulations. It's a lie. And this is why a lot of times believers are not ready to confront life. Because they think that they'll never go through it. But here's the Lord Jesus Christ declaring, in this world you'll have tribulations. But he says, but be a good cheer. Don't fear. Be at peace. I'm going to teach you how to overcome it just like I did. Hallelujah. Amen. Every time you go into a tribulation, that's when you depend on the Holy Ghost. So he can teach you how to be an overcomer. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The, Lord, the Lord wants you. To overcome. To the righteous, the Lord gives him battles. Let me say this. To the righteous, the Lord gives him battles. So he can overcome. So he can, so he can say, Lord, look at this giant going down. Hallelujah. To the righteous, the Lord gives him battle so he can win. To the backsliding, the Lord gives him battle so he can come back to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. But to the righteous, he goes into battle. He goes into battle with a sword in his hand, with a shield in his other arm, with a feet guarded to the gospel of peace, with a helmet of salvation, ready for battle. The righteous goes into battle because as he goes into battle, others live. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Can I hear an amen? amen. Jesus is, he is. The greatest overcomer. He, he, he overcame everything, people of God. And now he gives us, he gives you and me his victory. Man, this, this service is like, it's like it's all tied together. Everything is so tied together in this service. The Lord gives you his victory. The song that Saul was saying, my victory is his victory. His victory, I'm sorry, his victory is my victory. That is such a truth. His victory is your victory. If you would just accept, this is what real faith is. Faith, the faith is to accept the victory of Christ. That's what faith is, to accept the finished work at the cross and allow that, that work to go in through your vessel and your body and finish that work. Hallelujah. In 1 John 4, 4, the Bible says this, you are of God, little children. Look at this. You are of God. You are of God. I love that, isn't it? It's like, now, now you may be of God, you know, Maybe in the future. No, no. You are of God. Say with me, I am of God. Am of God. Say it again. I am, I am of God. Of God. Say it like you believe it. I am of God. I am of God. Say, I am born of God. Born of God. Hallelujah. And he says, look at it. And he says, he who is in you. He who lives in you. Is greater than he who is in this world. Who is in this world? The devil, his host, his demons. He says that the one that lives in you is greater than all that. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, let's give the Lord a big shout out in the house. Amen. He's greater than all. This is why the Lord says there's no fear in love. That the Lord has not given you a spirit of fear. Why? Because if greater is him that lives in you, then the only way you fear is because you might think or the devil has lied to you that whatever is out there is bigger than him. And there is nothing bigger than our Lord. And our Lord has made his house in you. Hallelujah. Like I said last week, you are the house of God. 
That, look, he says, that, again, let me say it again. It's just so profound. He says, the Lord says that you are the temple of God. In other words, the, and the Holy Spirit lives in you. In other words, this, is, this vessel is God's house. It's not my house. It's his house. He made this temple his house. And when you go to your house, you don't need permission to go in there, do you? When you go to your house, do you ask the neighbor, can I go into my house? No, you don't. You just walk in the house. The Holy Spirit lives in you. This is his home. Hallelujah. I hope that that's the home of the Holy Ghost. Because if it is, then you are carrying the most powerful entity in this universe. Not this world. This universe. And his name is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Move out of the way on your situation. Move out of the way in your problems. Move out of the way in what you're facing. Let the greater one deal with it. Amen. Move out of the way. Get your pride out of the way. Get your arrogance out of the way. Come on, get it out of the way. Let the greater one deal with it because there's nobody greater. Amen. Greater is him that lives in you. Greater is him that lives in you. He's so great. I love one of my favorite verses is, uh, he's all in all. He's all in all. He's, he's my peace, my joy, my strength, my life, my breath. He's my food, my water, my air, my blessings, my home. He's my father. He's the alpha, the omega. He's all. He's all in all. Is he all in all in your life? He's my victory. He's my carrier. He's my watcher. He's my defender. He's all in all. He's everything in everything. Everything that you are, he is. That's what, that's what the life of the spirit is, to allow the greater one. And you won't do it in your own strength or do it in your own Emotions and your own will, your own intellect, and your own self. The, the, the life, the, the new life, the new birth. The Lord wants the old to die. Let me, let me give you a revelation here. Let me hope you are ready for this. You know, like when the Lord came to this world, he had to die, right? But in the cross, he, he brings us all into the cross to what? To die with him. In other words, you have to die to this world. In order to make the new world, in order to enter the kingdom of the world, in order to, to enter the kingdom, whether it's the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of this world for the Lord Jesus Christ, in order to enter the kingdom, you must die. In other words, you have to die to what you are, to this world, you have to die to this world to be able to be transported to the next world. So we enter through death that we might have life. We enter through the cross, which a cross is a symbol of death, to have life and life more abundant. The Holy Spirit is a spirit of life. It's a life-giving spirit. That's what Jesus called him. He was a, a, a living spirit. In other words, he's always creating life within you. Life. If you allow him, the life will turn into joy. The life will turn into peace. The life will turn into righteousness. The life will turn into a life. Not the life of this world where worry and problem and issues and this and that. The life of this world pulls you. To the principles of this world, which are, which are just shallow and, and nasty. But the principles of the kingdom, it draws you up to righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Can I hear an amen? amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, glory to Jesus. Yeah. Second Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9 says this. For the eyes of the Lord... Look at this, people of God. Man, if I, every time I read this verse, I'm like, I'm like, for the eyes of the Lord 
They run through and fro through the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of whose heart is loyal to him. In this you have done foolishly, therefore from now on you shall have wars. The war, the Bible, the, 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 that word wars, I, I sorted it out and it meant battles, warfare. In other words, what God is looking for is for the heart that maintains itself loyal, truthful, trustworthy to his God. That's the God, the heart that God is looking for. And he said he's looking. Who can he show himself mighty on his behalf? Man, I don't know about you guys, but I'm like, oh, like, oh God, how do I get God's eyes to stop over me? How do I get his eyes to, to suck and see the might of God in my life, in my children's life, in my family's life, in our church life, in our community, in this nation, in this world? I want to tell you this nation needs, this nation needs God. Amen. Hallelujah. Get us, get it, get it through your mind. This nation needs the Lord. This nation needs the gospel. The only thing that can change the heart of a person. Can I hear a good amen? Hallelujah. Amen. So let me, let me get into the message now. Eight characters. Of an overcomer. I'm going, go, I'm going to go very quickly with this one. Say, man, eight characters. Number one, he doesn't depend on his strength or his knowledge. An overcomer, dependency comes from the Lord. Learn that, people of God. The overcomer's dependency is on his God. Number two, his trust is in the finished work of the cross. His trust is that his God has won the battle. That's his trust. Trust is the Lord. My trust is on him. My trust belongs to him. I trust him. Because if he won, I will surely win also. Number three, he does not give up on the walk with the Lord. An overcomer never gives up. Say with me, I never give up. Never. Say it again, I'll never give up. Never give up. An overcomer never gives up. An overcomer is not pulled like the end days into, 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 into moving away from the things of God or falling away from the things of God. Even though the overcomer might be, might be pushed, like I said last week, you can, you can be pushed like a palm tree. Sometimes you feel like you move to the left. You, sometimes it feels like you're moving to the right. In life you do, you feel sometimes like, Woo, like but you know what? But the overcomer, that tree always sh shoots back because he knows that his roots are grounded in the gospel of the Lord. Yeah, he might be, he might be moved a little bit. He might do a little circles in the storm. Who doesn't do? Man, I, I still remember years back when we, when we, when we were, we had, our, our trees are bigger now. But our trees, we had two trees in front of our house and they were very small. They were about this size. And man, that's when the storm on. What year was it, mom? It was the storm that 2008 came. And man, and me, me and Mel were looking through the window, and our tree was like, honestly, like it was like this, almost hitting the floor, like. And me and her were praying, like, Lord, protect our trees. Let them, let them withstand the storm, Lord. You know, those trees were like. You know what? And sure enough, when the, when the hurricane passed, the trees just, just went back to the middle. And that's what the Lord says, that we are like, like palm, tree, palm trees. Because palm trees can stand the wind. Can stand the circumstances of life. Can stand the issues of life. Can stand the battles of life. You, beloved, are a palm tree. You are rooted and grounded in our Lord Jesus Christ. So if you feel like you've been moved to the left and to the right, don't remember, just remember, I'm an overcomer. Begin to speak to yourself, I shall overcome because the Lord overcame, I will also overcome. Can I hear me? By the blood of Jesus and by the word of the testimony. Hallelujah. 
An overcomer knows how to worship. An overcomer is a worshiper. And man, let me tell you, the, an overcomer worships not when all things are good. No, 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 no. An overcomer is not, it's not just only when things are good, worshiper. An overcomer worships at all times. Is the kind of an overcomer is that all is, is the man, is the man and woman of God that trust the Lord through every situation. Yeah. They'll worship in the night, they'll worship in the morning, they'll worship when there's light, they'll worship when there's darkness, they'll worship when it's good, they'll worship when it's bad. An overcomer is a worshiper. Yeah. If as a matter of fact, even different, a worship an overcomer worship even more when things are not right. right. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's completely the opposite. Hallelujah. Number five, the word of God is his food. Number six, he learns to put complaining to death. Oh, man. In other words, you, you hear your own words of complaining and you're like, okay, no, no, I'm an overcomer. Can I hear an amen? amen. Because we all begin to complain. Can I hear an amen? Is it true or not? Amen. But when you hear yourself, you're like, no, 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 I'm an overcomer. And you bring, get to death. Hallelujah. Number seven, the overcomer, his voice is heard in the courts of heaven. An overcomer, his very words resound and bounce on the temple of the living God. His word carries authority. His word carries power because the overcomer, his life is the Lord. His life is the word of God. His very blood circulates full of God's word. Number eight, his weakness is his strength. Oh, learn this lesson. His weakness is his strength. His weaknesses are magnified through the power of God. I always marvel because I still remember when I was in, in high school, man, I mean like, I came to the United States, right, and, and you go to that class that we all used to take. It was called speech. Do you all remember that class, people of God? You know, and, and I remember taking the speech class, and, and my English was really bad. Well, I mean, it's, I think it's gotten better now, but it was really bad back then. And the teacher kept wanting me to go to the front to speak, and I'm like, uh-uh. Man, there was nothing, nothing that she can say that she can get me up there. I remember my final test. The Lord had put it in her heart because she had pity on me. She actually went and waited till all the students leave and says, the only way you're going to pass this class is you're going to have to speak to me. So she, she literally got all the students out. And even then I was like, so I grew up with that. And then the Lord... You know what? It's funny how many people that are preachers are heard that. Man, I, I, I don't know why God called me to preach. I don't even know how to, I don't, even, I don't even want to speak. Why? Because my weakness allows his strength to speak. I want to tell you, it's never stopped. There's not one day that I come here to this pulpit and I tremble at my God. And I just, all I do, I just surrender and allow him to speak through me. It's the same thing in every situation. You need to allow your weakness to become your very strength. Can I hear an amen? amen. Because the strength comes from the greater one. Yes. It's like you're moving aside to allow the power of God to move on your behalf. Oh, man, if you didn't hear anything I said this morning, if you can take that with you, people of God, you will begin to see the victory of God in ways that you have not seen before. Last verses I'll read. I'm going to give you a warning. Is everybody okay if I give you a warning this morning? Yes. Hebrews, Hebrews 10, 38 and 39, it says this. Now the just shall live by faith. The overcomer lives by faith. Say with me, I live by faith. I live by faith on my God. His victory is my victory. The victory of the cross is my victory at the cross. 
And he says, now the judge shall live by faith, but if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not like those who draw back. Say with me, I'm not like those. I'm not like those that draw back. Look at him. Mean, even Peter, I mean, even Paul speaking these words. He says, he said, but we are not those who draw back into perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. We're the ones who consistently, we keep going because we know that the job is not complete, that the time is still up. As long as you have a, a breath in your nostril, you're still here. Can I hear an amen? amen. It says, but, but the just shall live by faith. But the just shall live by faith. And anyone draws back, my soul will not be pleased with him. Don't be of the one that draw back. No, be the one that in, in your weakness, you push forward. Hallelujah. Say with me, my weakness, I draw closer to God. Hallelujah. So let us testify. Let me say that again. Let us testify Christ's victory. You as a believer should have a testimony of the victory of Christ in your very life. There should be victories. You should show forth God's victory in your life. You should testify. You should be a living, a living testimony for the Lord Jesus Christ that his gospel is true and that that you can see that the gospel has worked through your life and now you're a living testimony. You might not share your testimony, but I can tell you, you're a living testimony. Let's stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. Can I have, oh, can I have the guys, are the guys back in here? Hallelujah. If the, can the worship team come back if they're here? Can I at least have oh, Saul and Alfonso to come back? Hallelujah. Lift your hands to heaven, people of oh God. Hallelujah. Lift your hands to heaven. First of all, I want to, maybe there's somebody here that you have not made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. Maybe you are here this morning and, and you're like, man, all the stuff sounds great. How do I sign up? How do I make God all in all in my life? The Bible says that you must believe. You must confess with your mouth. It's a great place, a good place to confess. So with everybody's eyes closed right now, maybe there's somebody in the house. If you are here and you want to make Jesus Christ your Lord, will you lift your right hand to heaven? I want to pray with you. Anybody in the house this morning? Anyone in the house? Anyone in the house? I see hands up, but I'm not sure. I'm not certain. Anybody in the house? I'll tell you what, let's pray all together. Yes, I see hands. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Just pray with me. Say, say, Lord Jesus, I come before your throne and I confess that I am a sinner. Against you and you only have I sinned. But this morning, I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I confess to my mouth, to the unseen world, that Jesus Christ has become the Lord of my life. I repent of my sins and I accept you to myself. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This morning, you have become Lord of my life in the name of Jesus. You know what? This morning, I want to pray for you if you allow me. Maybe you are here, you need prayer. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. So if you need prayer, just come to the front. No matter what it is, just come and we'll pray for you. Glory to Jesus.